Hey there everyone and welcome back to my channel, Take Control of Your Health. I'm Dr. Corey Stern. This channel is dedicated to teaching you about how to keep your diet clean and healthy um, in a toxic world and not to be a victim of the bad guys who are trying to poison us. So I hope you've had a chance to watch my previous videos where I've talked about toxic substances in your foods and your processed products. And if you have watched them, I hope you've had an opportunity to start cleaning stuff up. I hope you're reading labels more carefully and eliminating the things that are making us sicker, weaker, and stupider and that you, as a result, are feeling better. And that's what I am all about, is helping people to be as healthy as possible and optimize your health. So today's topic is something that people have very strong feelings about, and that is bread. Um, most people are eating a lot of bread products and products made out of flour. Right, so not everybody actually knows this, believe it or not, but breads are generally made out of flours which come from grains, and the most uh, popular one is wheat. So let's just talk about some of the things that people are eating that are made out of wheat flour. Obviously, any kind of bread, so we're talking about bagels and rolls and um, croissants, a lot of breakfast foods, right? Pancakes and waffles um, and, and sandwich bread, so sandwiches and, and all kinds of bread. Um, so whether it's sliced bread or pita bread or rolls, it's all still made out of wheat flour, including wraps. And a lot of people think that wraps are better for them. It's, it's the same thing, it's just a different shape. And people think uh, spinach wraps are better. Um, because they think they're made out of spinach, but they're actually not. So most wraps are made out of wheat, and if, if it's called a spinach wrap, they put a little spinach powder in it. It's still wheat. Even if you, if you think that wheat is no good and you're buying rye bread in the store, commercial rye bread, just look at the first ingredient. It's wheat. And other products that people are eating a lot of, um, obviously cookies made out of wheat flour, cakes, pie crusts, um, pizza crust, and then snack foods like pretzels and crackers, uh, th things that you're not thinking about too much like wontons and wonton soup and dumplings and pierogies, which are dumplings, and the list goes on and on and on. I'm sure that I didn't cover everything. But so think about how much of this substance are you eating on a daily basis? Oh, I left out pasta. Pasta is a huge one. So a lot of people eat pasta on a regular basis. So I agree that there's really nothing more delicious than a freshly baked hot loaf of bread with some delicious grass-fed butter on it. Um, I happen to love bread, but I also know that the commercially made breads are really toxic, so I do not eat them. I, I stay very far away from them. So I wanna go over with you why bread is bad, why, why flour is bad in this country. And when I say this country, I'm talking about the US just in case there's anybody watching from another country. Um, I think it's probably worse in the U.S. than anywhere else. So I want to give you a little bit of information about that and then maybe some suggestions about how you could enjoy bread and other such products without making yourself sick. So bread has actually been a staple food for humans for over 30,000 years. So, you know, that, that tells us that that there is something good and nutritious about bread, or at least there was. Um, it, it really was actually a staple of early man. And um, 
and it was made with wild wheat, right? So before there was um, domesticated farming. And then even once there was domesticated farming, uh, you would take your wheat, which is a plant, right? It grows on the ground. It's, it falls under our definition of food, which are things that grow on the ground, grow on a tree, or have a mother. So this is a, a, a food that grows on the ground. It's a plant. And then uh, uh, early people, before there were machines to do it, would, would grind the, the wheat plant into a flour with um, something similar to a mortar and pestle and then make it into bread. And that's all, that's all fine. And, and if you can do that, um, it's okay for you to eat it. But I need to fast forward to post-World War II in the United States where the wheat seed was altered, altered. The wheat seed was altered. And the purpose for doing that was to increase the crop yield and also make the crops more resistant to things like insects and um, other blights that occur with, with these types of crops. So the alteration of the wheat seed actually caused a problem that was unanticipated. And that has to do with gluten. So many of you know that uh, gluten can cause problems. Um, a, bit, a lot of people are gluten-free and there are people that don't understand uh, why gluten is bad. They just think it is or know it is, so they don't eat it. But the truth is that it's not gluten that's bad. It's the altered wheat seed and the gluten that is produced by the altered wheat seed that's not good. Okay, so so early wheat, what we call, um, um, uh, oh boy, oh boy, Dr. Corey, um, I need some brain supplements. Uh, heritage wheat, sorry about that. What we call heritage wheat, um, the gluten is is not toxic. So gluten is a part of the bread that makes the bread, um, you know, elastic, right? It makes the dough elastic. And what happened with the hybridized wheat is that the gluten, it just, it changed. Uh, the gluten itself changed and became damaging. It interacts with a substance in your digestive tract. The substance is called zonulin. And that zonulin is something normal. The zonulin is something that helps to make sure that your digestive tract, the lining, stays intact. Something called tight junctions in the lining of your digestive tract. So tight junctions um, prevent permeability. If you have too much permeability, substances that are not supposed to be able to get through your digestive tract do so and they go into your bloodstream and they cause all kinds of problems like allergies and inflammation and autoimmune diseases. Okay, so that's, that's what the problem is with gluten. It causes the zonulin to misbehave, which loosens up the tight junctions and allows substances to enter the bloodstream that shouldn't be entering, right? So, that's one of the what that's one of the main reasons why modern wheat is bad for you but but there's more things that are happening with with farming today right so crops unless they're organic are sprayed with pesticides with fungicides with weedicides um you've probably heard of glyphosate i've mentioned it in some other videos uh brand brand name is roundup and glyphosate is a weed killer and it also makes the, um, the crops less resistant to being eaten by, by insects. And glyphosate causes cancer and it da also damages your intestinal tract. Okay, so, and 
it's it's in any any crop that's that's GMO, but it, it's it's widely used on crops in the United States. It is actually banned in some countries. So you have bad gluten, you have your crops being sprayed with toxic substances, and then to add to that, um, when you mill the flour, when you're not using a, a uh, grinder, you know, a hand grinder, when you're milling it with machinery, you're basically stripping it of most of, of the nutrients that are in it. Um, in addition, the, the hybridized wheat seeds actually contain less nutrients to begin with. Okay, so uh, one of the richest sources of various B vitamins uh, used to be wheat. Believe it or not, it, it was a really good source of, of vitamin uh, B2, which is riboflavin, um, folic acid, uh, niacin, thiamine. Um, a lot of people are deficient in these vitamins. Uh, riboflavin deficiency can cause all kinds of symptoms, uh, especially problems with your eye. You like name an eye problem. A riboflavin deficiency could be contributing to it. Um, dermatitis, migraines, um, weakness, cracks in the corner of your mouth, swollen tongue, reproductive problems, mood issues, depression uh, can all be attributed to a possible riboflavin deficiency. And then think about folic acid. We know that pregnant women need to take folic acid, right? And this is the reason for this is folic acid is essential in making sure that the spinal cord develops properly. Now, why are people de deficient in, in folic acid? I mean, part of the reason is they're eating crappy wheat. Now, yes, those nutrients are put back into the wheat uh, flour. It's called enriched wheat, but they're synthetic. Okay, synthetic vitamins do not have the same physiologic effect on the body as what's contained naturally in foods. Okay, so that's for another video. I have a whole talk on why whole food uh, vitamins and minerals are better for you than synthetic. Now, the next thing that's bad about wheat is that some toxic other toxic substances are added to the flour so to bleach the flour to lighten it um, there's chlor chlorine dioxide chlorine gas is added um, and then something called potassium bromide and that's um, added to both improve the elasticity as well as bleaching uh, the wheat further now that substance is actually banned in many countries. Okay, so it is definitely carcinogenic. It causes damage to the thyroid. Um, you may or may not know that the thyroid requires iodine to, to produce thyroid hormone. And potassium bromide actually causes a problem with the iodine in your body. So anything that ends in I-D-E or I-N-E, so chlorine, bromine, bro chloride, bromide, fluoride, all the ides and enes are molecularly similar to iodine or iodide. And if you're iodine deficient, and many people are iodine deficient, um, you, uh, when you're eating potassium bromide or, or, or chlorine gas, your thyroid might mistake those molecules for iodine and just suck it right up. And it's causing a, uh, a, a big problem with the thyroid. So we see an epidemic right now of thyroid nodules. Um, these nodules are something that are fairly new. So many people have them. A lot of medical doctors don't, don't, don't really know, you know what's causing them. Um, they monitor them. They they do they do ultrasounds, um, uh, you know, sonograms. They they do biopsies of them. Sometimes they become um, malignant. Usually they don't. But it appears it appears to be there there appears to be an association with 
eating a lot of potassium bromide and these thyroid nodules, potassium bromide was started uh, was uh, added started being added to to flour in the 1980s. So that's when we've seen this increase in in thyroid issues. So what can you do about it? What can you do about it if you want to eat bread? Well, for one thing, there are a lot of alternative breads out there. These days, it's not that hard to find better quality breads. The bread that I generally eat is made out of sprouted grain. It's not made out of flour. It's called Ezekiel brand, Food for Life. That's the brand that I eat. There are other ones available. That's just the one that I eat. Um, it comes in all different forms, sliced bread, pita bread, English muffins, hamburger buns, wraps, um, and I like it. I like it. It's usually in the freezer section because there's no preservatives in it. Oh, that's another thing that's added to commercial breads. There's so many um, uh, chemicals that are added. I didn't mention the azo azodicarbonamide which is a uh, dough conditioner, also known as the uh, yoga mat ingredient. It's in a lot of plastics and it is still in a lot of breads. So these brands that I eat, like the uh, Food for Life Ezekiel brand sprouted grains, it doesn't have anything in it. That's why it needs to be kept in the freezer. There's no preservatives. There's no, no nothing uh, suspect in it. You can also find what, what I mentioned earlier, heritage grains. So heritage grains are um, come from seeds that have not been altered. And um, there's a lot of companies that sell bread and seeds that are heritage. And I can put some links um, on this video, but you can find it very easily. Just go in your browser and type in heritage grain breads and you'll see all these companies that you can get them from. Um, you can also bake your own and that would be ideal of course if you're willing to do that. Get some of your own good quality heritage organic flowers um, and try some alternative alternatives to wheat. So there's, there's einkorn, there's spelt, there's teff, there's all kinds of things out there that you can experiment with <clears throat> and you just have to get used to eating something a little bit different, right? So <clears throat> if you've ever thought about why regular bread can sit on your shelf or sit in the store for weeks without getting moldy, um, that's because the mold dies. What's killing the mold? Oh, you don't want to eat that stuff and you don't want to put it in your body. The other thing to think about is if you have any kind of blood sugar issue, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, you really probably don't want to eat foods made out of flour, no matter how good the flour is. Uh, they are high in carbohydrates, which do turn into sugar in your body. So you really want to be careful with that. And I do recommend that if you are struggling with a blood sugar problem, that you get your majority of carbohydrates from vegetables rather than from grains, at least for a while, at least until you stabilize. So I hope this information was helpful and I really appreciate all of your feedback. I read every single comment. Um, if you leave a comment on the video, I read it. I try to respond to you. If you um, direct message me on Twitter, I also respond. I do appreciate your suggestions. I will try to cover them all. And um, I hope that you have subscribed to my channel and that you're liking the videos. Hit like hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications and share this video with anyone that you think needs to see it. That's the point of me doing this. I would like us all, us all to be healthier. That's what it's all about. So thank you so much. I will see you again soon with more information 
on how to stay healthy. Take care, guys.